assalamu alaikum uh, this is the lecture 13 for the course of estimation of signals and systems in the previous lecture on uh, microsoft teams uh, i uh, told you about how we can implement a dynamic estimation problem uh, with the, and estimate the states with the help of a kalman filter now most of the concepts uh, that we saw during that lecture were already explained to you in the in that 11th uh, online uh, in the 11th lecture uh, which is which was uploaded on youtube uh, regarding the kalman filter but uh, there were a few things that i had told you in the simulation already and uh, now i'm going to explain them again so in today's lecture the first thing that we are going to do is that I am going to uh, tell you some uh, how to initialize your simulations. So, initializing initialization. I emphasized I emphasized on initialization in the previous uh, lecture where we where uh, you were taught how to simulate the problem uh, that i previously discussed but we are going to discuss some initialization issues uh, in more detail okay so there are two kinds of uh, or we, we will uh, look into it there are two kind of init initializations uh, the first one is the one point initialization and the sec second one is the two point initialization note that we are, uh, are doing this the application that we are considering is that of uh, estimating a motion, estimating a moving object with certain known model, motion model. In the previous uh, lecture, I told you about the constant velocity model, and we are going to cover. Uh, I am going to give you present to you a case study where we can analyze how to work with constant acceleration model as well so uh, for now okay we are going to uh, see this topic uh, you know how to initialize your simulations then the next this is the main topic of today's lecture that is estimation of non-linear systems whether it is noise and we are going to cover this uh, we are going to approach this problem using the extended Kalman filter which is actually uh, what do you do is you linearize your non-linearity and then implement it uh, then impl implement a Kalman filter such a filter is known as an extended Kalman filter you will see the effects of linearization definitely if you linearize that means you approximate so uh, when you approximate there are going to be certain effects that you need to keep in mind and uh, of course when you linearize it's not going to be an optimal solution like uh, we talked about in the previous lecture so then we uh, i will present a case study and then the simulation part will be done by you i'm going to just uh, you know i'm not going to provide you with a code uh, it is going to be kind of uh, all the details and uh, the initialization steps and this and that so let's get started with today's lecture okay initializing in uh, simulations we already know that from the previous lecture that when you initialize we say that the initial state will be random variable okay the initial state is going to be a random variable and the second thing is known uh, is that the prior of the initial state will be assumed Gaussian these are the two uh, so uh, these are the two things that uh, we are going to assume now so the thing is that we have already discussed this thing okay so what do you do is you choose an initial true state and generate the initial estimate Okay. We know that uh, the prediction or the estimation part of the Kalman 
at the at first it needs to be initialized initialized you need to uh, give it this quantity in order to start your simulation so uh, you are already familiar familiar with this concept okay so and we know very well about this terminology okay so uh, let's move to the next slide so we did in the practical application uh, implementation uh, in tracking in the previous lecture but you can you can in the previous lecture we followed a certain strategy but you can uh, choose you know other strategy strategies to initialize your track or uh, to initialize the track as, uh, estimate so let's say um, uh, if you have only the position okay where uh, wk denotes the measurement noise this is the vector state vector and this is the measurement then you can generate it something like this that you can wait for two consecutive scans i will show you i will give you a, an example in the next slide but let's assume at two different times you know your target roughly you know you know you, you will know the velocity the upper bound and the velocity the lower bound on the velocity so it's not that targets move with you know infinite many velocities you will have a rough guess about uh, you know a certain bounding box kind of a scenario that your velocity is going to be something such that your target will stay in uh, in a certain bound okay in in such a case what you can do is uh, <coughs> let's say if you want to uh, initialize your state vector which consists of uh, uh, velocity and uh, which consists of the position and the velocity part and the measurement is uh, only the position in such a case you can just simply wait for the second scan scan okay let's say this is for uh, time equals zero and this position is for let's say time equals one or t let's say zero. so in such a case you can subtract this position from this one and divide it by your uh, you know the time in between th these two scans okay and you are going to get the velocity the position uh, you can easily you know you have the position we are already measuring the position and the second thing is that how to initialize your state covariance so we had followed the same practice in the previous one in the previous lecture you can uh, initialize this uh, covariance matrix by this equation okay now uh, <clears throat> maybe uh, we did the initialization in a bit different way in our previous lecture but there are a number of ways each having its own pros and cons but at the end you will see that the performance no matter how you initialize the performance is not going to change that much unless it's a uh, non-linear filtering pro problem and you are not using an optimal filter like let's say like an EKF then obviously you need to tune in some noise and stuff you will see some difference overall but so there are different valid approaches you can use any of this any of these the one i taught you in the previous lecture you can use that or you can use use this this is this method is called the two-point differencing okay it guarantees the consistency of the initialization of the filter you you are not just simply uh, putting some random value instead of this velocity it's a random value but it's not a fluke you are actually putting some you know uh, based on some certain calculations you are giving it the velocity so now there is another thing that if uh, like we talked about the monte carlo runs in the previous lecture and i hope you have uh, you know you executed that code 
and uh, you executed point by point so i hope you understand that in detail now so if there are a number of monte carlo runs that we make i have told you i have emphasized the importance of monte carlo runs so you will definitely going to need a number of monte carlo runs then initialization the initialization process has to be followed with new independent noise generated in every run like we did in the previous simulation yes it's nothing new it's the previous uh, it's the same old thing this is uh, done to you know avoid any bias in the same you know you are going to uh, you shouldn't use the same initial conditions it will you know result in a biased kind of output okay <clears throat> and uh, previously uh, we will look into our simulations to uh, what what had we done okay so the next approach that you can so the first thing was you can use two point initialization the second one is you can use one single point initialization previously we didn't use single point uh, we didn't use uh, two point differencing or two point initialization method rather it was kind of a, a one point initialization but we gave it i told you to give it different to give it different uh, you know initial velocity initial velocities but generally in one point initialization what you do is why do you why do you do it uh, when in certain problems you see the variance of the velocity from two point differencing it might be larger than you know bound on the speed this will present a, a bigger problem especially when you are dealing with clutter and multiple targets in your scenario so in the, in such a case what we do that we can initialize from a single observation the position is easy you have uh, the measurement you just simple that's the position that's your position like in the two point differencing thing but velocity is usually uh, you know you give it uh, you use zero as initial estimate of the velocity or like in the previous lecture we have we had used a certain uh, you know velocity let's assume you know that the, a plane cannot fly at a certain speed it is going to stall when the speed decreases from a certain quantity so you know that it is never going to you know uh, get below that so you can use that specific velocity also you know so uh, that that's what we had done in the previous uh, simulation so anyhow you can use zero as the initial estimate in this case in case of one point initialization uh, so obviously this is going to cause some problem in the monte carlo runs because every time you are initializing initializing the velocity it is going to be zero in every monte carlo run it is definitely going to give you certain bias it is going to introduce a bias in your estimate estimate at the initial stage so uh, so when care should be taken when uh, com comparing different algorithms uh, uh, based on uh, uh, this method of initialization uh, you can you know you have to analyze your your uh, your results uh, such that such irregularities as bias introduced do not you know affect your results in discussion <coughs> figure one shows uh, and uh, and depicts the scenario with two point initialization so let's say there are multiple scans multiple times at which you uh, get the measurements from your sensor the, uh, the sensor measures the position here okay. so when you measure in the case of one point in initialization you only need the measurements at point a 
you have the position okay that is uh, that is going to act as your uh, initial state as well and then you as already explained you will uh, put the velocity in case you are estimating a velocity equal to zero so that's it in case of a single point or one point initialization you are going to start from the first scan whereas in the case of a two point uh, uh, initialization scenario or two point differencing scenario you will have to wait for the measurements that will arrive at the second scan or scan b in this case scan 2 whatever you want to say so you receive the measurements position measurements at a you wait for the position measurements till time b okay and then once you receive those you can then compute the velocity uh, you know i have already told you you will have a certain bound you will know the upper and lower limit of the velocities that a target can have and then based on the you know the difference this is the difference this 4.98 this is just an example let's say from point a to b when the, when the car traveled it traveled 4.98 meters divided by the sampling time which is a 0.5 seconds you are going to get a velocity so you can use this velocity for initialization of your filter so summarizing the filter initialization thing you have two things when you initialize the filter state and its variance so the scenarios have already been explained uh, you will have two techniques the single point differencing and the two point differencing you now know how to initialize the uh, the, the vector the state vector and the covariances in both these things so uh, while uh, when you when you initialize using the two point differencing approach or two two point initialization so you can you know uh, follow these three three steps which i explained earlier as well and then you can uh, you know initialize your filter and start your estimation cycle now this two point differencing approach it actually amounts to first order polynomial fit you know you can do higher order polynomial fits uh, and uh, for for state estimates uh, having higher derivatives like acceleration or so and uh, you can use maximum likelihood to you know estimate or uh, you know for the polynomial fit of a higher order so uh, this is all for you know, filter and SIL initialization i am not explaining uh, much in that detail because we have already done it once simulated it once i've told you the procedures in the previous slide so uh, just give it a read it's the same old thing we just summarize the previous approach <clears throat> so now we're going to see the non-linear you know, filtering approach for dynamic systems Estimation nonlinear systems with additive noise. This is the next topic uh, from your book that I have recommended already. So, uh, in front of you, this first equation is the motion uh, state dynamic equation. You have the state, uh, you have the state transition, and you have the noise state uh, process or plant noise. Okay and uh, again uh, the noise is assumed additive and uh, white okay and with uh, this pdf okay and uh, <coughs> the measurement equation as discussed earlier is something like this okay uh, the measurement uh, the non-linear 
measurement function and the measurement noise wk again it's assumed a wk is also assumed white and independent from the process noise and the initial state has a prior pdf of this thing and is also assumed to be independent from the two noises as the process and the measurement noise so the prediction part goes something like this we had already discussed this thing uh, previously okay not that much previously but uh, yes you can easily re relate it to the chapter discussing uh, Kalman filter so let's derive the extended Kalman filter and see how it works now let's assume in this case the state dynamic or start dynamics are also non-linear that is your trans state transition matrix is, is non-linear as well so uh, what you can do is you can use the vector trailer series expansion in order to linearize your dynamic model now this uh, so this is how it is done this is the same equation then uh, you take a derivative so derivative in the in in in, in continuous domain amounts to uh, is equivalent to differencing in discrete domain so we are talking about discrete discrete domain and then when you ex, uh, expand it using taylor series you will have a lot of higher order terms and stuff like that okay so but we need to limit you know you, you have to cut off these higher order terms that while a re, a linearization so uh, we'll see what uh, we can do so there are two things here we have considered that the uh, your state dynamic equation is uh, non-linear or it, it 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 can be case that uh, your uh, your measurement equation is non-linear that is the relationship between your measurement and your state is a non-linear so uh, you know the this thing uh, is equal to actually uh, fx of k denotes the uh, the gradient or the first derivative of your non-linear function and uh, it is equal to this thing okay you you differentiate partial differentiate with respect to the state del x x is the state vector so we have you you have you need to derivate it with respect to each each state each state each component of the state we are going to have this look at an example of so similarly uh, as explained in the previous uh, equation in the previous slide 10.3.2.2 in uh, equation in the previous slide uh, we saw that the first order term derivative term then this is the second order uh, partial derivative okay so uh, this is uh, we all know that this is the Hessian of the ith component of the nonlinear function f so these represent actually the higher order terms and these terms will be neglected now the neglecting these terms is going to make this filter a suboptimal filter because you're now ignoring or you're letting go of some useful information here so now you can see that the predicted state can be uh, you know obtained using this equation this one okay and uh, now you can see that okay let's move to the next slide i'll explain uh, there so 
Now, uh, okay, this is the this is the residue. Uh, dropping, you can find out in this thing uh, where the higher order terms are dropped. Okay, let let's explain it using an intuitive example later on. Uh, I guess it is going to be more understandable once we have the example with us uh, then you can come back visit revisit your book and uh, give it a read you are going to get the idea what's behind this thing okay so the measurement part uh, it is the same thing actually uh, as the previous thing uh, a little bit different again uh, I'm going to explain it to you in the case study now in this case the relationship between the measurement and the state is nonlinear. As explained to you earlier in, in, in a lecture, we saw that uh, let's assume that if you are getting kind of uh, let's say the bearing measurements, okay, maybe a range and uh, uh, certain azimuth, and then this is the measurement, whereas your state consists of the position let's assume only the position in Cartesian coordinates so the relationship between the state and the measurement is going to be nonlinear because you know need to convert them using some nonlinear functions so in that case you are going to linearize your measurement uh, you know measurement equation okay I am going to explain it in in the coming slides in more detail it is going to be more easy well as uh, told to you in the previous slide just when i give you that example revisit this and you're going to get the uh, better idea okay so uh, let's skip this slide you can give it a read later on Okay, yeah, so <coughs> so the main thing is about the stability of the extended Kalman filter. So sufficient conditions for the stability of Kalman filter are not necessarily sufficient for the extended Kalman filter. Why? Because we have, as I already have told you, that we have dropped some higher order terms. So there is an approximation involved which may lead to divergence of the filter you know some unbounded growth in the you know, estimation errors so that's why you have to take care you have to tune the expect uh, the extended kalman filter prior to the application simulation anyway you have to tune it using the process noise you know, process noise it's what it is it actually tells you that how much your plant how much noise does your plant or the process involved is adding in your uh, in your estimation process you need, you need to control that using this process noise <laughs> okay so you can give a read uh, to these okay these are you know uh, the same same concepts that i have already explained to you maybe in the, uh, when we discussed the kalman filter on the previous slide so uh, they are easily you know understandable if you have any problem you can ask me in the interactive session on MS team okay uh, let's get to an example so the example is such that we have a platform with a sensor moving in a plane which is represented by a discrete time equation so this is the position in X this is the position Y okay and uh, where x and p are the average platform position 
position coordinates and the perturbations like vibrations or jitter or whatever so the del x p and del y p will be assumed to be mutually independent zero mean white gaussian noise okay and uh, in this example the variances are this and this no matter what the notation you know you have to get used to this we uh, use different notations uh, while i am simulating uh, giving you an example so it doesn't matter so anyhow so these are some uh, basic you know uh, initialization stuff and this and that so you can easily understand this because we have already performed okay this is a scenario this is a platform and uh, the target is denoted by this thing so there actually platform is also moving okay and when the platform is also moving if it's stationary it's okay if it's moving then you need to account for its position as well it's it's dynamics as well and it's easy you just subtract it from you know uh, we'll do it in some simulation maybe so you can see the initial condition and this is the non-linear function uh, you know, that i was talking about okay the non-linear measurement function so this is the cause of non-linearity here okay so due to this thing we need to use extended kalman filter and uh, you can do this and go through this example you will see we ignore the higher order terms we need linearize and we linearize and then you know do some uh, do some uh, you know initialization stuff and get to this point so let's move on move on okay so now you have you understand the problem that we are trying to estimate some general uh, motion of a let's say motion of an object so there are two options now the first thing is let's assume okay let's for a second forget this example let me generalize it a bit let's assume you are measuring the position of a target in in let's say cylindrical coordinates you are measuring the bearings maybe the range and the azimuth the straight vector consists of let's say cartesian x and y coordinates in cartesian the relationship among them is going to be non-linear now there are two ways to approach this problem the first thing is when you measure something you just convert it into let's say when the sensor gives you a measurement let's say r and theta the range and azimuth directly convert into cartesian coordinates of course the conversion process needs to be taken care of as well because the conversion process is going to introduce certain biases and there are standard techniques which can be used to you know convert uh, and uh, you know, uh, you, know you, you try to eliminate the bias introduced so there are certain processes we might talk and while we discuss some papers in the future there are some research articles already published okay so there are two options the first one is this one convert the measurement and then the converted measurement is also going to be in Cartesian the state is also in Cartesian. You can use Kalman filter simply. Okay, the first thing. Then the second, but obviously I've told you that it has its own inherent problems. Okay, uh, explained here. Okay, and now uh, as already told so the second thing is you can in the first approach we because the relationship after conversion is linear so you we will use 
Kalman filter only. In the second option, we do not convert the initial measurements from cylindrical to Cartesian. So what we do is we use an extended Kalman filter, okay? Because now the measurement equation is non-linear, so, so we are going to use the extended Kalman filter, linearize the measurement equation, and use it wherever we need. So now the filter is going to be implemented with max coordinates. Your state is in Cartesian in this in the second option. Okay, in the second option, we are going to uh, implement it using max coordinates. Your state is going to be in coordinate in Cartesian coordinates, whereas your measurements are going to be like an azimuth or something. Uh, like it, it, they are going to be in polar coordinates or maybe the uh, anything so it's a more generalized example uh, than the book okay so the filter so uh, you can check your book which uh, i have i had already sent you and see some results uh, from his simulation you will see how it the filter converges and so on we will reproduce the results uh, or maybe maybe uh, simulate in another scenario with different parameters that is going to be an assignment as well because i have already explained to you how you implement a kalman filter and uh, after this we are going to do a case study uh, an assignment that i gave to maybe when i ta taught the same course two years ago maybe and uh, uh, the students uh, did a very good job. I'm going to send you their assignment, uh, the assignment that one of uh, one of the one of the best assignment. So, okay, so let's summarize the extended Kalman filter. So you have some initial state as already explained you have a system dynamic equation maybe non-linear or linear okay and then you have a measurement equation so we we can have this non-linear this non-linear we will see we will talk about this in the previous example that i gave you like converting your polar coordinates into cartesian we assume that the measurement equation is non-linear okay then <coughs> We, we saw that the measurement and the process noise they are assumed to be mutually independent then uh, state estimation can be done by uh, you know, linearizing your non-linear dynamics so, Uh, the results will be the standard first order and the second order extended Kalman filter. Um, this is going to be the flow of the algorithm. You know, you can just read it. It's same like the Kalman filter, except with some changes which involves the Jacobian matrices to be computed. Okay, so it is going to be mentioned somewhere. Okay, here. So you compute the Jacobians and use them. Then linearize. This, that's the, Jacob, the, the Jacobians are the actually they represent the linearization. You can use them instead of your non-linear state estimate. So there are some problems I already mentioned with the linearization of filters. The problems. The errors introduced, or maybe the biases, they are caused due to linearization. Why linearization? Okay, because the thing that affects the most is that we did, uh, we, we, as we saw that, uh, we, your Taylor series 
expansion, we neglected the higher order terms. First thing. The second thing, when we evaluate the Jacobians and the Hesians, we do not have the actual values. We have actually the estimates. You know, the estimates and the predicted values. So, when so there are two problems. First, you are approximating, you are neglecting the higher order terms. And secondly, you are using estimate or a predicted value instead of the exact value. We don't have the exact value. If we, if we had the exact value, we don't need to estimate anything. Okay. So when you do this, combine this with this one, the 8 is going to cause a lot of error. So what are the ways that you try to come, uh, you know, for compensating for these errors? So the first method is, as already explained to you, is addition of artificial process noise or pseudo noise. Okay, you can simply add some artificial process noise in your in your uh, state dynamic equation. The magnitude of it can be increased. So how you can use a larger modified process noise? You know, uh, you can use this instead of this, adding this term, where QPK is a uh, positive semi-definite pseudo noise covariance. The second method is that you can use you can multiply the state covariance you now the predicted state covariance with a scalar number which is greater than one okay so instead of using this as a predicted state covariance you can use uh, so uh, instead of using the actual predicted state covariance you can use this one which is simply multiplied by a factor phi And this factor uh, phi is known as the fudge factor. You can select it, uh, you know, using some specific methods. Or you can read your book uh, regarding how to do that. Or you, uh, we can also sometimes uh, we need to use some hit and trial methods as well. And then uh, you can also use, you know, alternatively this kind of an equation. Okay. Now, you know, so in the in in such a case, you are going to of course this uh, is going to be a matrix, you know, manipulation. You are going to use this equation instead of uh, this one. Okay. Uh, the now this multiplication of state covariance by some scalar quantity that is greater than one is equivalent to having the giving the filter a fading memory you know so fading memory means that the effects of the immediately uh, yeah, yeah, the, the previous scan is going to be, you know, previ previous scans are going to start to fade up, and uh, the weightage of this <coughs> filter that you assign here is uh, going to fade up with time, and. Uh, So this will, uh, so these are some of the processes by which we can, you know, um, you, uh, you can, you will be able to compensate for the errors caused by the linearity process and the uh, using of, and the usage of, uh, usage of those 
predicted state and estimated state in the Hessians and gradient of the extended Kalman filter instead of the action values. So effect of increasing the covariance noise. We have already done this topic while discussing the Kalman filter. You can read it. You can ask me any questions you have from these slides uh, that I haven't uh, discussed in detail. But you need to give it a good read. Okay. So let's go for a case study. Again, this is from an assignment that I had uh, given to my graduate students a uh, few years ago. So the case, case study is actually their assignment. So as already uh, told you earlier, that the case study is about estimating in a start, uh, target state dynamics when the measurement function is a nonlinear one. So in this case, the transition matrix and all that stuff, uh, this is uh, linear, again like Kalman, nothing different. Okay, uh, same transition matrix, the state vector and the uh, process noise updated state vector. So this is the simply the same old prediction state prediction equation. So the thing that is different from the previous case study or example that we simulated it's this thing the measurement equation it's not it's not non-linear in the previously it was linear you you had h the observation matrix multiplied with the state vector now this is the function of the state uh, state vector okay where w is the observation or the measurement noise okay and uh, this should be small h of kxk it is the state non-linear statement uh, state it's a nonlinear function of the state. Okay. So, prediction and uh, estimation equations that we saw previously in the case of Kalman filter, the linear Kalman filter. In case of extended Kalman filter, they are almost the same. The prediction equation is the same. Okay. The prediction part is the same. It has no changes in it. Uh, this is the predicted state, this is the predicted covariance. Uh, the process noise, the process noise covariance matrix, state transition, state on the estimate from the previous scan, and so on. The change lies in the next estimation part, specifically speaking, it is this thing that has changed okay uh, i am highlighting the changes and in a short while i'm going to explain that so basically what are these things this this and so on so uh, you can omit this j here uh, let me highlight it you can omit that j here uh, it was for a specific case and this here uh, this okay so what is this thing this whole thing is actually the linearized linearized or the jacobian of this nonlinear function where this nonlinear function is derivated with respect to each state i am going to shortly tell you about uh, what will be the elements of this uh, jacobian matrix and so on so now instead of <coughs> h being a constant you have h as a function of the state vector so this is a function of state vector we are not multiplying h with x similar thing goes for this one same thing goes for this one and uh, there is a mistake here uh, it shouldn't be xk given k, it's actually this thing, okay? This prediction 
do you put the values of this prediction to state prediction in this one this one and right here in uh, equation number six these three values and they should be actually h of x k given k minus one okay not k given k it should be these uh, we, we are going to put values from x of uh, from the predicted state in the jacobian matrix in these three cases, cases which i already ticked down whereas this is the same nonlinear function okay this function you are going to uh, insert again the values that we are going to use in this are uh, are also going to come from uh, equation 3 which in this case is this one okay so again values that uh, we are going to use in this part are going to the values for this uh, function they are going to come from this one okay the state prediction equation 3 whereas uh, this value this uh, comes from this thing okay this is written right we're going to put in this value here yeah. uh, so this is uh, written correctly okay now what are these jacobians how can you derive them let's go to the next part so the problem is something like this you have a constant velocity model and uh, the model consists of x y z x is uh, in cartesian coordinates these are the position uh, back, uh, these are the states for position and these are the states for velocity so we are estimating the tar targets in three dimensions x y and z and along with their position and along with their velocity this is the velocity uh, this is the state vector three position three velocity uh, values states now the state transition matrix is something like this you can evaluate it i have already told you about it uh, when you change the order of the states previously we were uh, i guess doing something like that we had a position and then the corresponding velocity uh, and so on so when you change the order of the states uh, you can you know and uh, look for the state transition matrix uh, do some necessary changes there too okay now the main part of this thing is uh, so all these things are explained what is this this is an identity matrix of 3 cross 3 this is a zero matrix of 3 cross 3 and so on okay very simple okay the state the, the measurement matrix, the linearized measurement matrix or the Jacobian matrix is going to look something like this. Okay, and this is simply the first first row is the range, uh, a partial derivative of a range with respect to each measurement. Uh, so each each position, we, we are going to derivative with respect to position so here it goes because uh, the velocities are you know the velocity vectors are not actually uh, you will see that it, it they are not going to appear so the partial derivatives are going to be equal to zero for those okay so you can terminate this equation right here okay these extra zeros these were for some uh, constant acceleration model for a constant velocity model, this is the <coughs> Jacobian matrix that we are going to use. Just terminate it here. So now uh, this is a linearized measurement matrix, and uh, all the elements of these matrix can be seen here uh, in equation 22 and following the equation 22. So the first derivative with respect to so. We are measuring range, azimuth, and elevation r, eta, and so the measurements z is in 3D, it is r range. The first one is the range, the second one is the azimuth, and the third one is the elevation angle. So 
these two are angles the last two eta and uh, epsilon and r is the range so this is the measurement whereas i have already told you about the state vector it's in 30s in coordinates so now you uh, derivate all these with respect to the state vectors in order of appearance so the first one is uh, here you can see you derivate the range with respect to x axis then you with respect to the y and then with respect to z then the second parameter that is the azimuth angle would be derivative with respect to uh, x y and then z correspondingly and then same goes for the elevation angles too now each of these uh, derivatives uh, they come uh, to be this thing so x k is the x axis uh, this is the x, y, and z axis position, definitely, obviously. And uh, so the partial derivatives are uh, partial derivatives of range with respect to x, y, and z are something like this. So you are going to compute these derivatives on a paper, then you are going to, when you program it, you need to have these program into your, you know. Uh, these variables need to be these partial derivatives need to be calculated using these equations these on the right side of this uh, of these equations the equations and these called a x y and z these values uh, as i told you you can take them from the from the uh, from the uh, you know the prediction part in the case of most of the equations except the last one where it is the uh, where it is the uh, where it is the uh, estimate in the last one you estimate the state covariance okay the next uh, term will be the partial derivative of uh, azimuth with respect to x then y and z and uh, finally you get the three partial derivatives uh, for you know the elevation angle and they come out to be this these things and uh, where this d denotes this thing okay you can compute the partial derivatives uh, you know you don't need to do it by hand you can use there is an online derivative calculator it, it is very simple you can easily compute derivatives if you are given any problem uh, just google online derivative calculator and uh, the first link that generally appears is the same it's a very good tool you can use for derivatives calculating derivatives and integrals and if you know it so it will be more easy if you do uh, these things you can use the derivative calculator okay now uh, these are the measurements okay and the small h the nonlinear function h is going to be a combination of r eta and epsilon so you are going to use these values okay when you estimate the state you are going to use this nonlinear function okay where you need to put this value instead of r this value instead of eta and uh, this value instead of epsilon okay uh, you only use this once in your uh, estimation cycle in the state estimation equation okay you need to uh, use these values now these values i have already told you they are the prediction from the same cycle so use these values <coughs> put in x y and z coordinate position values from the prediction okay in this case uh, the measurement measurement covariance matrix can be found out using this thing okay. uh, we have already you know i had given them the noise figure so the standard deviation or okay the variance for range is nine meter squares uh, one degrees for as azimuth and elevation these are the measurement noise figures okay. measurement covariance matrix and this is the nonlinear function it should have a transpose here okay it's transpose itself so it should be a column vector so this is the end of this lecture uh, after you submit your assignment 
uh, we are going to discuss about your next assignment and uh, till then I need you to you know you to be able to program this extended Kalman filter problem that I discussed in this paper I will in this assignment I will uh, send you this assignment uh, in MS teams as well as upload it uh, on the you know C online portal this assignment is not for you this is a model assignment that a student had submitted you need to re-simulate it okay not the whole part it actually consists of another algorithm known as interacting multiple model what I need you to do is to implement extended Kalman filter for constant velocity model that's it get the results and that's it you can just change you know you can just change the uh, Kalman filter code that I had already given it to, to you and uh, you can evaluate the performance of extended Kalman filter okay see you in next class